Says, get that India, big boy. Mike Asimo! Call an ambulance! Maybe call a priest! Oh, what a shot! What a shot! Campbell Killer! Hello and welcome back to an instant reaction edition of the Tip Sheet Podcast. As always, I'm your host, John, also known as 4020. Joining me after a Another frustrating loss is my good mate, 60s, big fella. We're all on site at the home of the Parramatta Eels tonight and we watched <clears throat> the boys squander uh, a golden opportunity to secure what has been very rare, a win this year. Uh, getting run down from 16 nil to go down 30 to 24 to the Brisbane Broncos. Suffice to say, I imagine that you're probably feeling as frustrated as I am, uh, but any other emotions in the, the bank right now? Uh, uh, mate, yes. First of all, that shout out to Paraleagues for hosting us there with the pre-game preview podcast in the bistro. Uh, and also to Star Partners Real Estate, Auburn, Norellan and Parramatta for their continued support. But mate, I'm, I think I'm a bit beyond frustrated. I'm, I'm somewhat angry tonight and I'm ag- angry at our own uh, performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, you know what, uh, there were parts of tonight that summed up why the Eels are in the position that they are on the table. Well, I, I, think, is- I think there's a, a fair use of a, a sting that we have, usually have directed to another party that could be turned internally today, and it's the uh, old mate uh, Johnny McEnroe. Look, you can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious! Boys. Okay, well... Let, let, let's let's talk about some things that are just really, really hard to understand from tonight. Um, first of all, in the first half, completely on top, some of the early tackle kicks. Now, there's nothing wrong with an early tackle kick, but it, it has to be seen that you're actually achieving something with it. And... In the first half, those early tackle kicks were nothing. Like they, they all they basically did was give Brisbane possession in a time where they had no momentum. That's it, and it gave them the chance to work back into the game. It gave them the possession to work back in the game. And I think on one of them, I, I commented to you as we were watching it that. They just got the be- battle, the better of the ter- territorial battle, when they worked their yardage meters, and then put in a kick on us, which had Gutherson doing his best to catch a high ball on the ten meter line, and was immediately swamped by the Broncos' chasers, and it just like it made no sense. We went from a position where. I think we were attacking on about their 40 metre line on the second or third tackle, hand the ball back to them. And it's like, why? We're out, we're, we're on top, we're strangling them. And we just gave them, we gave them the opportunity to come back into the game. I just, I don't understand that. I don't understand at a key time. And, and I mean, look, maybe the football gods are, uh, partly to blame for this, there, it's certainly a play that I don't like, which is the charge down. When when the Broncos were having to kick on you, the last, you put together your best defensive set of the season. Yeah, the Broncos were five meters out kicking it, and I yeah. I love the energy from Kelmer. I I love the effort, but as written, the charge down rules give you no incentive. You're either getting Simbin for taking out the leg, giving away a penalty for touching the guy, or you know, ninety five percent of the time, the ball is taking a bad deflection. That's not going to work out for you. And this isn't the NFL where, if you'd done that charge down, it would have been a, a safety or a turnover on downs. And and maybe the, we need to have a conversation about if the charge down is to exist in an era where you can't touch the kicker. Maybe charging down, at least a clearing kick, should not be six again. That's a, that's a separate conversation. Maybe that needs to be talked about since they love tinkering with rules so much. But as written, what do you, there is no advantage to be gained there. And that is just such a, a misuse of effort. Like he made, oh, it, yeah. and it was a big effort. He came flying out of the line. But yeah, it was and never going to. The trouble was too. 
making a charge down when you're relatively close to the sideline and relatively close to the dead yeah, ball line. It's, it's, it's going to the sideline or it's going to go for the dead ball for a seven tackle set. Like yeah. we, we got the better of the two results, honestly. Uh, yeah. there, there, there is like, like I said, a 5% chance maybe that it takes a perfect bounce and pulls up in his hands for a try. But it was essentially a line dropout situation. Now you're going to get the ball, you know, on, on Brisbane's by, by the time you tackle with your kick return, you know, 40, 35 meters out. Yep. So you look at uh, plays like that. Then, then you look at gifting the Broncos two tries, just absolutely gifting them. And, uh, one with the play between Penasini and Talangi, the other with Sivo just a straight out drop, and and Sivo had had you know a, a fairly decent game up till that point. And I mean, I know players make mistakes, but you I mean all year, all year, errors have immediately been punished. The Eels' errors—they, it's, it's like they instantly result in a try, and the, it, we, it's they, not a stat you, you points you, away. It's there. not a stat you keep tracking, or at least not to the public, but points directly from errors and situations where an error prevented you from scoring, but led directly to the opposition scoring. Surely the Eels lead the NRL in both categories. Because oh, they, they have John. They have to. You know, but I, that first thing that I mentioned about the early tackle kicks, it had to have been part of the game plan um, because we lost to the Panthers going for that exact same play when we were 14 points up, uh, the, the early tackle kick. I mean, not in the same field position, but instead of uh, strangling the Panthers and making them at best come off their line by running the ball on the last tackle. I mean, potentially eating up another 30 seconds in that game against the Panthers. And then they don't get a penalty. They don't work play downfield. They don't get the first try that started the avalanche points. And that's old territory to go back over it. I would find it hard to believe that either A, it, that would be part of our kit bag, but you'd have to think when it's done not just once, but twice in the first half. And then, I, look, I understand an early tackle kick that Gutho went for in the second half late in the game because it was a matter of, you know, throwing caution to the wind. We're trying to make something out of nothing and get downfield. But, you know, when when we in such control, in such control and just give possession back, um, and it, you know, I think whether it's where we where the kick came from, the execution of the kick um, that really didn't place huge pressure or or get a huge advantage other than just hand position over. Oh, I don't know, mate. And then I mean, don't, the, the errors, the missed tackles, like I I get. John, I get that, and we talked about it last week, effort effort areas have been high. Um, execution and class have been lacking. Um, some aspects of game management have been lacking. Um, I get that we're stretched with um, injuries and that it's injuries to key players. Um, but that Broncos team was not, they were not good in any way, shape or form tonight. Uh, they had some players who were very, very good performance. Tristan Saylor was very, very good tonight. Um, and ultimately as well, um, they deserved the match because they did not make the sort of mind boggling errors that the Eels ended up making. Uh, I can't believe we, the completion rate was as high as 75% from yeah. us. <laughs> it's one of those ones where surely the stats aren't telling the, the true story here because Brisbane finished with an excellent 84% completion rate, 33, 39. But the Parramatta Eels, who did start very strongly, I think they were, uh, oh, I want to say, going into the teens nearly perfect. And then even once they got to the 20, uh, the 20 set mark, I think they were still hovering around the mid-70s. 
uh, but ended up 31 to 41 for 75 percent but uh i suppose do intercepts count as completed sets or an incomplete set because uh, we have one with guffo there so maybe some stuff in the uh, margins there might be making that look better uh, but in terms of the other key stats, Eels with more runs and run meters, but six line breaks are two in favor of the Broncos, 60s. More tackle breaks, which also means more missed tackles for Parramatta, as you alluded to earlier. Uh, Eels with way more offloads, and we covered that in our pregame show at the Bistro. Uh, Eels a prolific offloading team, and, and the Broncos not so much, but while the offloads were effective early on, they, they dried up when the game got tough. Um, so we had a flurry of them in the first stanza, and we scored a few uh, good tries off the back of it but uh, could not sustain it. And then, yeah, the frustrating stuff, effective tackles. The Broncos only marginally had a Parramatta, a tick under 87%, the Parramatta Eels a tick under 86%, but 41 missed tackles against the Eels to 23 against the Broncos. Only 11 ineffective tackles to 29 against Brisbane. So I suppose that, that contributes to that offload count. Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, then you get to the discipline, 13 hours apiece. Eels conceded, conceded four penalties to Brisbane's five, but... Gave away more six agains. I think it's three to one looking at the splits here. And then the Eels have, uh, well, it's two in report, but I believe it's Reagan Campbell Gillard both times. One for a late hit off the ball. And then the second one I suspect would be for a, a maybe a hip drop tackle, uh, but I didn't see much in it at the time. And I also didn't see much in the off the ball tackle. So, uh, and that, that was one of my, one of my few gripes with the refereeing was that I, I don't really blame Todd Smith for our, our issues this game, but. It did feel like the Broncos got a few cheap tackles off the ball penalties, and the Eels got hit off the ball a couple of times and didn't get the same luxury. But beyond that, uh, I'm not too upset about the officiating. Oh, no, I, I mean, I, it's the officiating isn't on on the radar for me. It's it was it's a non-factor. Every every factor with this had, as far as I'm concerned, the the Eels needed to look in the mirror for the reason why the win didn't come their way. I mean, you know. It's, it's the frustrating part that you're feeling, John, is is that you know no lead is good enough for Paramount. No, that, that that's twice now uh, in three games that we've been up three scores, fourteen points yep. against Penrith, sixteen points against Brisbane, and look, obviously the clock was uh, much less of a factor against Brisbane. They had the bulk of the game left to play, but when you're constantly conceding three score leads, uh, that it's not an unassailable lead sixties. But it, it is a very, very strong lead, and you should not be giving up the way we are giving up those points in return. And well, it, it's the it's the rapidity of the of the scores. That yeah, happen, and, and you know, between like they, the, the, the dumb Broncos football went back to back, back to back so quickly with those two tries uh, in the first half, and then back to back late in the game when they they got the the lead and then extended the lead, you know, in in rapid succession. And it just was obviously reminiscent of the of the uh, treble of tries that the Panthers scored. Yeah, and in, on, in on that about note, four minutes against us, it, it's the same factor. Isn't it? Taking yeah. out the dumb football, which is obviously a contributing, uh, you know, factor to it. But <sighs> Sailor and Stags took Blaze telling his lunch money today. Like they bullied him, and he he really struggled. And they, to, to Brisbane's credit, we're saying as we're watching there, Brisbane would be stupid not, to not go back to our left edge. And they just went there on tap, on tap. And and then, I mean, even the, the last two tries they scored where Adam Reynolds was being a bit of an opportunist, uh, both to take his, I suppose you'd call it an intercept 60s, uh, where the ball, the footy gods really just actually pissing on us, not even spitting on us, they're pissing on us at this point. The, that interplay between place and Will somehow finds... Uh, Reynolds. Then the second time he gets that little kick away, uh, our left edge is just a shambles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, there's no, there's no ignoring that that the flurry of points that uh, come on the left edge. I mean, we talked about it. Um, Goal wrote about it in the in the preview. We talked about it ourselves that the the left side was going to have to lift, uh, and, and you know. It, it didn't happen. It just didn't happen. And um, and, and look, <laughs> um, Blaze is having his defensive struggles, but you know, he, there's there's errors that are coming around that as well. Like um, it, that. I mean, it was comedy capers what happened between Will and Blaze in that 
with that try. Uh, I love like, the, the again, it's kind of like the Kel Matula situation. Where I love the energy. I love the idea of the right centre making a big hustle effort to link up with the left centre and do the wraparound. But they both had catastrophic failures there. Will's pass was off the mark. Blaze doesn't reel, reel it in, bobbles it, brings it back in in time to not lose the ball, and then decides to shovel it out at the last second at a rate of knots to the looping Penasini who had no chance to catch. It was just a comical. And then the ball. <laughs> and then the ball put, it pops up perfectly, perfectly, perfectly for Adam Reynolds. <laughs> and we and we have to look at uh, how often we've had times where we've just turned over the ball in possession and it's been an instant try for the opposition, like an instant. And whether it's been that we've been at our own end of the field or even worse still, on the attack and at the other end of the field and a, and a team goes 80, 90 metres to score, this is not our first dance in that regard. No. And and it's multiple dances sometimes in games. And, um, you know, so again, to keep using the analogy, um, you'd have to suggest our dance card this year is full. It just... And you know what? I come out of a game like tonight, and again, all you know, credit in terms of effort, because there's not a question that the boys are turning up. But the the game management tonight, the errors, uh, the missed tackles. Uh, you know, I, I just look at it. You know, the the worst thing is when we've made errors in possession, we double down by giving away penalties and six agains. Yep. And compounding, you, you compounding, know, compounding. You, yeah, we compound the error and then you know the points are coming. And I'm sure that the advice from uh, coaches in, in the sheds and, and on the team sheets and the game plan – the tip sheet is, you know, if you get behind against Paramount, just hang in there. The errors will come. They'll make mistakes. They'll double down on it with, um, you know, giving away some penalties or six agains or what have you. You just stick. You just we just stick to our our game plan. It will happen. It will come. That and that's that's really where it was at tonight. So. Um, look, John, uh, I, I can't be any blunter. Like tonight, when when we were leaving and I said to you, uh, like, it, this was the game where I felt we deserve our position on the ladder <laughs> of where we are. Couldn't disagree with you. And I, I look at how, at the football that the Tigers are playing, and I look at what, what we're producing, and let's face it, like next next week probably makes um, you know little difference in terms of results. Um, you know they have to Parramatta has to win in that last round, um, and I, I guess what they have to hope for is if if we lose that we don't get blown away next week. That that is the one non negotiable against the Dragons, yeah. Because uh, win or lose now against St. George is moot uh, because of the the head-to-head nature of the game against West Tigers. They wouldn't, well, they're, they're now one game ahead of Parramatta. And obviously, if we win against St. George, we, we go level, which means that just it's winner takes all. Last week, we lose against St. George. Then it's going to be win and then four and against as a factor. So if you lose yeah. by, like, you've got a pretty you've got a pretty big buffer. So I don't want to invoke the wrath of the gods once again when it comes to football because we've done a fair bit of that this year. There's a pretty big buffer right now. If I quickly have a gander at the latter 60s, uh, the Eels are, uh, I think it's exactly 60 points of four and against. So don't don't forget that every point of four and against counts for double in that final in the round. One, yeah. yeah, so you you don't want to be losing by a healthy double-digit margin against the Dragons because right if we were going to the last game, like ignoring the Dragons game, if we were going to the game against St. Uh, St. George, against West Tigers, if they were to win by 31 points, that would then leapfrog us uh, in, a, in a situation where the, the the win totals would be equal with a win. Their 31-point victory would secure them second-last place. So 
that's going to be the key next week against St. George's. Obviously getting a win, but if you're not winning, being competitive and mit- uh, minimising damage. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, actually, if uh, if we lose next week, the Tigers are ahead of us on the table, so they have to. Parramatta has to win those, so that that won't matter. If we like what we lose to St George by, um, if if um, if we lose that, 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 that that's, that's what I'm saying. Though. If you if you yeah. win against St George, it's just a straight up shootout last yeah. round. But losing against St George would mean that you uh, you you would be talking about potentially for and against being tanked against. Uh, the last round, you would then need to win by a certain margin. Oh, look, no, I think it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't matter. We just lose if we lose, we're we're done against the against the Tigers. It doesn't matter. No, lose, like, lose against the Tigers, you're done. But if St George run a train on us next week, hypothetically, and they put uh, more than sixty on us, which is unlikely, then you would need to win against the Tigers by a margin of some capacity. Then, uh, yeah, but. Right, yeah, right now, uh, yeah, the, the the outcome, two outcomes are we win against St. George and it's just a straight up winner takes all. Lose against St. George by a big margin and uh, it's going to be having to win by some capacity and then I suppose lose by a small margin, which is the 2A, yeah. 2B, and then you just need to win against West Tigers. So the yeah. right now, the most basic forward is win against West and you avoid the spoon, but it's a, it's a pretty shit attitude to have because you want to be beaten St. George as well. Oh, yeah, and, and look, there is, uh, if if they if Parramatta's to lose against St George anyway, you're talking about one team coming in with uh, plenty of momentum and belief, and and the other team is squandering big leads and losing. So, um, you know, I wouldn't be backing us in any way if if that were the case. I mean, it, look, it's just as I said tonight, uh, you know. I'm I'm verging on being angry and upset, not just frustrated, because you just can't have the sorts of things happening tonight that we saw happen. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's too basic in the way of football to to have that happen. Um, again, I'm not questioning effort. I'm not questioning desire. I'm, you know, there just was a lack of football smarts in some of the play. So, um, yeah, mate, I, I don't really think there's too much more I need to say other than to give out some praise to some players who deserve it. Um, Joe off in Gowie again. Yeah, play his backside uh, off again. I, I, I think you know his certainly his his surge in the back half of the season. He's got to be a He's going to be a chance for the Ken Thornet medal. I, I, in all seriousness, yeah, I think given the the caliber of some of the players that have gone out, and obviously Mitchell Moses and uh, even Junior, and then the fact that he is just being such a consistent force, hasn't he? Uh, he he has been banging out healthy triple digit contributions on the ground, good amount of tackles, bringing some venom as well in the defense, and I think the boys wouldn't be uh, letting that slide when it comes to their internal voting. And I, I think, yeah, he's a real, real... Can you even call him a dark horse? Maybe he's uh, more than a dark horse for the KT now. Well, look, the the ones that he'd be... I think the main one he'd be competing with would be uh, Gutho. True. Um, uh, what I think for certain is you'll see Joe F. and uh receive an award of some sort on the Kenthorne yeah, coach, medal. Yeah, coaches like, award best forward or something like that. Yeah, the, yeah. The, uh, the other the other player uh, that I want to acknowledge as well is Regan Campbell Gillard. Yeah, Reg, uh, Reg tried Reg tried hard this week. Yeah, and and look, that's that's both the, the eye test and also the stats with both those players. Now, John, I'm I'm not really I'm not in the mood to give a three two one in that regard. I'm just happy to shout out a couple of players like that. Um, unless you've got, um, unless you want to give a three, two, one. No, I think that we're fine with a couple of shout outs. I think uh, we saw a better game for Will Penasini this week too. You gave him a, a shout out as your potential best on field in the preview. He scored the opening try uh, and then ended up banging out 140 metres. And I don't think there were any real clangers in defence. He's down for two missed tackles, but you know, the, the Broncos do throw a lot at you on the back line. And by contrast, you know, Blaze, who's credited with four missed tackles, felt 
a lot worse defensively. Uh, but I thought, you know, Will was pretty solid. Uh, I thought Sean Russell tried hard as well. He's down for 155 off 16 carries. Uh, made some really tough ruck work. Uh, had The pass from Bryce wasn't quite there. That was probably one of the turning points as well, wasn't it? That little short side raid where the pass hit him at the knees rather than on the hip. And uh, he would have probably gone over from about 15 metres out. But I thought that Shawnee had a decent game. Dill always tries his backside off. There, w- there was a missed tackle against uh, Rogers. I think it, I think it was credited to Dill, which was a, yeah. a, rare, a rare blemish for him. But in saying that, his interior slide defense, they left him on an island there. There was no support from the inside. So not help there. But I thought Dill, 150 metres. Uh, where, where is his defensive numbers? If I just pull across there. He is down for 19 tackles and one... One missed tackle, 60s, and that's that's a brutal one, isn't it? So, well, it is, especially as uh, he was sliding heavily. The blokes uh, that Rogers stepped off his left foot, um, Dill sort of lost his feet under underneath him, and um, only made like a little bit of a grab at the player. Um, but a measure of the lack of slide from the inside was that. Um, although it was rapid, the, uh, Rogers was um, hit the ground, but there still wasn't a player within the vision on uh, in the TV coverage uh, coming across. It was just it was open space, and um, yeah, I, I mean I can't remember exactly what happened on the inside in terms of uh, whether those players were involved in in. Uh, tackling someone, and that's the reason why they weren't there. But um, yeah, that was that was certainly a um, a memorable miss, but the only one that he made. Um, what what do you think of uh, Micah? His first half was um, near spectacular. Yeah, some phenomenal defensive efforts. Another, he's he's in two weeks. He's put together two of the try savers of the year candidates with the effort on Tedesco against the Roosters, and then against Tristan Saylor, who, that that was a ridiculous penalty, 60s. Uh, incidental contact with the head with a tackle that's coming from underneath to wrap up the ball. Uh, what if I... Mm, I'm going to bite my tongue here because I don't want to get... Uh, don't get too stuck in the mud here, but, yeah, Micah with the big effort there, and there was another one to uh, get back and stop a, a grubber kick for the line, and, and then in the second half, look, uh, he got left with a three on two, for the, uh, if we check the scoreboard here, it was the Selwyn Cobo try in the 55th minute. So I, I wasn't too upset him in that one. Um, but then the, the missed catch, the one you pointed out, um, you've you got to take them. That w- It wasn't a contested catch. You've got to be taking those ones. And the Eels diffused 80% of their kicks tonight. But, geez, they got stung for the ones they didn't, hey? Oh, yeah. But, I mean, again, as I said at the start of this reaction, it... it it, this felt like a game which summed up the season. Yeah, and, but it, it uh, really did. In, in saying that, uh, when a player puts on as much, as much effort defensively as they did like that with Micah, I'm not too upset. But yeah, dropping that ball was a, a bit of a, a bit of a stinker. Uh, still got it through 100 meters, scored a try. It was a, you know an okay night for him. Uh, it 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 does leave me a little bit frustrated with our bench selection. Uh, Jake Tungall getting zero minutes. Uh, in a game where we were starting to flag in terms of the the contact and could have used a bit of extra impetus through the middle, perhaps. But again, uh, in saying that, our options aren't exactly bountiful. Um, and I know the the cup team is on the bye, and there were some players you could have potentially pulled from in Matt Dory and Ogden, I suppose, probably the, the two that come to mind immediately. But yeah. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the back on the bench 60s. If they're not a genuine utility, I'm not a big fan of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's hard It's hard for me to argue with you there at all. Well, look, I think that's about all we need to say to cover tonight's game. Uh, maybe just a, a shout-out to our NRLW team mm-hmm. who's playing at Granville tomorrow. Hopefully plenty of you get out there. Um, you might be listening to this at the same time that the game's on, given that it's a, on 11 o'clock uh, tomorrow um, but yeah hopefully plenty of you get out there get behind the team um, also the the shout out to uh, the Harvey Norman women's team who are on uh, later at uh, straight after the the NRLW game at Granville and the Jersey flag match which is 
slated for three o'clock at New Era Stadium over at Cabramatta. It's a pity they couldn't have put the three games on at Granville rather than two games at Granville and one at Cabramatta. Uh, I'm sure they they could have accommodated that. They could have had a, a really um, good and Festival involved carnival, crowd. Yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah, just just disappointing. It's uh, and. and as usual, the, the jersey flag ends up here, there, and everywhere with their matches in a season. It's uh, I know that Cabramatta is listed as a as as one of the home grounds, but they've they've ended up at uh, at, at Crestwood Oval this year. I think they played a they played a game at um, up at Kellyville. <laughs> um, you know, it's just uh, they they've played. At Granville, they've played at Cabramatta. It's you know, I just I, I'd love to see them have a consistent home venue and uh, be able to have support there every time they're playing at home. But anyway, that's that's just unfortunately a fact of life these days. So, mate, um, thank you for uh, your efforts again with tonight's podcast. You've done extremely well um thank you to everyone who's listening to this thank you to uh, the people that fronted up down at Parramatta leagues club tonight for our podcast at the home of the eels Parramatta leagues who we thank for allowing us to be there and present our previews or our post-match reactions and of course thank you to star partners real estate Auburn Norellan and Parramatta and although it's straight after a loss and although I'm extremely disappointed, a bit bitter tonight, I'm still going to say it, mate, go you mighty eels.